Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Abhinaya, I am a consultant pediatrician. So in Nelson based pediatric teaching, the next topic of discussion in the respiratory system is on congenital disorders of the lung. So this is a very simple presentation, I am going to tell you about some 4 to 5 conditions. So some of which are asymptomatic and some of which are just incidentally discovered. Some conditions do present antenatally and in the immediate postnatal period also. Okay, so we are going to talk about just briefly on these five conditions. So the first condition is pulmonary agenesis and pulmonary aplasia. So agenesis and aplasia might sound a little similar, but they are quite different. Agenesis, the genesis itself is an is absent. Okay, so genesis means both the lung and the bronchial stump. Okay, so the lung is absent the bronchial stump is also absent. So, this is a complete absence picture, isn't it? So, that is called A genesis. What about A plasia? A plasia is only the lung parenchyma is absent whereas the bronchial stump is present. So, some differences there between A genesis and A plasia. Mostly, it is an unilateral condition because why? If there is a bilateral pulmonary A genesis, that is incompatible with life, isn't it? So, this is uh, one in quite a common condition which occurs between 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 15,000 live births and it is inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion. So, what happens when there is an unilateral agenesis? So, there can be some non-specific findings will be there and even it is mentioned in our textbook that only 3% are diagnosed. Say, in case the, the patient, the person never had any x-ray during his entire lifespan. So, it is unlikely we are going to diagnose this person. So, only 3% are diagnosed while the patient is alive. So, in case the person didn't get any medical, he didn't have any medical issues and he never even got any investigation done and this examination under was not done like properly or in a detailed manner. Sometimes we might miss an unilateral pulmonary agenesis also. So, most of the symptoms are going to be associated with of the remaining systems or the remaining, uh, what to say, uh, the uh, association with another organ manifestation could be there. One of the commonest association of pulmonary agenesis will be the bacterial sequence. Okay. Some vertebral anomalies, tracheoesophageal fistula, so all these there. So, usually the manifestations will be related to the airway anomaly. So, the airway can go for some compression, stenosis, some tracheobronchomalacias can be there and even some vascular anomalies like the iota going and compressing the trachea leading to the airway compression. So, it is most often due to the airway complication or sometimes one-sided if there is a, I mean in a unilateral agenesis, the opposite lung is going to have a compensatory growth. So, that is going to push the mediastinum to the opposite side that is going to cause a scoliosis that is going to cause an airway compression. So, in a pulmonary agenesis or a pulmonary hypoplasia unilateral, the manifestations just remember it is going to be because of an association with some bacterial sequence something like that or it is associated with compression, mediastinal compression, airway compression or a compensatory growth of the uh, normal lung. 